You're like clockwork. I can always count on you to show up on time. I'm John Zadar. This is May 2nd. It is Tuesday and you're watching On Top and Hot, where we like to discuss hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm looking for stocks in all the markets. Stocks under five bucks, because that's all a penny stock is. And I'm looking for stocks that have potential by looking at their charts first and then finding catalysts to back them up. Now, when I'm doing my research, and it doesn't matter if it's OTC or major exchange, this is where I start my research, the otcmarkets.com website. It is primarily set up for the OTC market, and it's great for that. It's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC, but they bring in a lot of information about the major exchanges. So, save yourself some time. You don't have to do any sorting like you do with a Google search. Just come here, get the information direct. If you don't find what you're looking for, then go searching through Google. All right, I've got some great stocks to share with you today. I'm excited, especially about this first one. This is BGXX Bright Green Corporation. Now, this is a cannabis company. Hey, 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 sit down. <laughs> don't turn off, don't tune out. This is not your everyday average cannabis situation. As a matter of fact, it is historical. I am not exaggerating. This is a first time event that has never happened in the United States and it puts them in a position that is so strong, it's a monopoly. Let me share with you what's going on. They finished the day at $1.38 and a half with about 11% drop and I'm very excited about that because I think when people figure out what's happening here, this thing is gonna go nuts. It is the only company who's got this right. Check this out. They had news come out yesterday. Bright Green announces historic federal registration and license approval from the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA, confirming Bright Green as a bulk manufacturer of cannabis. Now let's jump into this because folks, this is humongous. I have never seen anything like this before except in 2018 when the hemp bill was passed. When that was passed, it was all about getting CBDs out there and hemp was illegal. So they made hemp safe. The government says, okay, federally speaking, it's okay. Well, CBDs was everything everybody was talking about. Well, at that time, there was only one Gras CBD oil out there. Gras is the best approval you're going to get on a supplement. That is to say, a product that doesn't actually cure any indications. It's just meant for well-being. Well, I can't even remember the company's name. It was a CBD oil company. They were the only company in the entire country that had a gross on their CBD oil. And they didn't do anything with it. Completely wasted it. And I think it was sad. I'm hoping this company has bigger aspirations. So they tell us down here that this historic DEA partnership paves the way for the $500 million capital raise. We're talking about a half a billion dollars. For Bright Green, as a federal U.S.-based legal company engaged in research and drug manufacturing, the scale of which will be unprecedented in the United States' history. This has never been done before. The DEA is the reason it is federally illegal. They have it on the Schedule One as being a dangerous drug. Even though the states have control, it is not legal to go outside the borders of the states or outside the borders of the country until it's federally le legal. Now, now, DEA also gives out research licenses for cannabis, and they are strict on them. I think we've got three, maybe four, maybe five in the entire country. We have just started studying cannabis. Scientists just started studying it. Canada is ahead of us by 10 years at least. Uh, Israel is ahead of us by maybe 20 years now. So we need that. But this has nothing really to do with that. Though they do have that right as well. They've got every right. They tell us here that Bright Green Corporation, the first federally authorized publicly traded company in the U.S., the only one on the market, right? The only one, period. They are permitted to grow, manufacture, sell, legally under federal and state laws, cannabis and cannabis related products. Now we're not talking hemp. We're talking, let's get high on the THC flower. That's what we're talking about. They also get to do research and create pharmaceutical drugs. Nobody can use THC to make a drug, even if it can 
fix an indication, cure a problem. They're not allowed to do it because THC is illegal. We can't even study it because you can't do any human trials, right? So they've got the right to do that. They also go to say that they have the right to import and export it. No other company in the country, this country has the right to move cannabis outside of the country and darn sure can't bring it in. This company has got that right. They go on to say that today they confirmed the successful registration of their federal license with the U.S. Drug Enforcement. Bright Green's DEA registration confers the necessary authorization to operate and create revenue under the U.S. federal law as well as qualifying the company to export into countries with equivalent recognition of cannabis and cannabis-related products for pharmaceutical purposes. Bright Green is now federally registered and well-positioned in this emerging market to generate significant revenue on a global basis and is now fully armed to commence revenue generation and plans to bring disruptive activities to the worldwide medical cannabis market. It's a monopoly, folks. They can move marijuana from one state to another state. They can move it across the borders. They can research it, grow it. They don't need a license from any state. As far as I can tell, they've got federal jurisdiction. Now, maybe states. I may have overstepped there. Maybe they still have to get state licenses. But they can do everything, and nobody can say no to them. Wow, can you imagine this, folks? And I can't even understand how far this can go. But they've obviously got plans. And this is a pretty big article. So I would say it is worth coming over here and doing some more due diligence just on this topic. Now, I have no clue what else they've been doing. I just really didn't care. This is so big. And the stock dropped 11.5% today. What was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she doubled. She went from 883,000 to 1.9 million. Not much at all. Folks, this is under the radar. I don't think anybody understands what's going on here. And you have to remember, the cannabis companies working under the restrictions of the federal law right now, the prohibition, they are making hundreds of millions of dollars. Many of the companies, not all of them, but many of these cannabis companies are making hundreds of millions quarterly, quarterly. There is no lack for business with cannabis. And if this company has no restrictions, how much money could they make? I'm having a hard time seeing the big picture right now. Share structure for this company. Well, we're not looking up the float because I can never get a straight answer anywhere. Unless they're a pink disclosure, nobody tells you. So the best we have are the numbers they give us here. Outstanding shares, $174 million. We know the float's under that. So it's not too bad. I mean, we're not talking 500 million or a billion, right? Financials for the company. They've got nothing as of December 2022. So they're not making any money yet. So what just happened, that is a big deal. That's, I mean, that's what they talked about. Not only making revenues, but doing it on an unprecedented scale. So we can expect some big things. And I don't know when it's going to start, but this is the only company in this lane. So they don't have to push anybody out of their way. Disclosures. We have a 10K here. That is their annual report. There's nothing on it though, but there is a lot of history. There's whatever they've done, everything they've done. And being a NASDAQ stock, I'll guarantee it's loaded with information. So if you want to know everything about the company, forget Google. Just jump into one annual report. They'll tell you everything. And outside of that, I don't see anything here. So let's go take a look at this chart. Yepers, we're going to be doing all of our charting on my free trading platform. I got this when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. So can you. And for those of you who have asked, I'm not doing a commercial for TD Ameritrade. They don't pay me to say this. Nobody pays me to say anything. I get to speak freely. I get to speak for free. Yeah, that's better put. So no, I just tell you because maybe some of you might want to know. So, we are looking at BGXX, the cannabis company, Bright Green Corporation, the first federally legal cannabis company in the country. Now, I'm surprised that I don't know of this company. I've been in cannabis since 2018, but since COVID, I've kind of fallen away from it, haven't kept tabs. So, first thing I want to do is jump back a year. We're on a four-hour, six-month chart. I want a little more history. And that pretty much gives me it. Looks like she started in May of last year. 
came on the market at about 15 bucks and immediately ran up to 58 bucks and then immediately fell down to two bucks. Wow. And she's been down there a real long time. Jumping back down to that six month, four hour view, things are changing. We had our high back here in September of 348 at the top of this fall down to that low. And we hit this at the very beginning of the year, 35 cents. And that was it. The downtrend is over. Here's our uptrend. Look at that red bull right there. And she is respecting that red bull. Boink, boink, boink. And now she's graduated. Her price is getting lighter, easier to push up. She's now on the 50-day SMA. However, today was a hard day for her. Yesterday, she got a nice push. But that, that's all they gave this news? This is under the radar, folks. People do not know what we're looking at here. No holds barred for this company. Today, she fell. I don't know why. I hope this comes all the way down to the 200, all the way down here. More close to a dollar instead of a dollar 40 right now, a dollar 38. And she is sitting on the 200. That is a good sitting if you got to stop somewhere. Osculators, not looking good. Not after all that fall today. All of them are pushing down right now. Keep going. I want it to come down some more. I know this is going to start to climb when people figure out what's going on. Our one hour chart looks beautiful. Our low bubble is on this corner where you want it. 90 cents, riding up that 200 day SMA, fully respecting it, hit a high of $1.81. That is a 100% run in 20 days. And I don't think there was any catalyst here. It was just pushing up. Then we got our catalyst that was under the radar. I don't think everybody understands what this is all about. And then this mysterious fall today, and she's sitting on that 200 perfectly. Volume is good on these last two days. Osculators, not so much. Looking at our five day, five minute. So she had a low bubble here of $1.22 four days ago. That pushed her up over the 200. She pushed herself off of that 200 a few times, hit that high and mysteriously fell back. And she looks like she's consolidating. Looks like she's trying to get up over that 50 day SMA. Honestly, I do want her to come down. I, I'm not shorting this stock. I just want a better price, but I will get an entry here. If it doesn't look like it's imminently falling, I will probably get 25, 30% of what I want. You should know how much of a stock you want, whether it be dollar value or shares. You should know so that you can make a plan, work that plan. So I know I want 25, 30% here. If it falls, great. I don't get upset because now I can buy some more. I only bought 25, 30%. I'll get another 25, 30% for cheaper. Bring my price down. And if it starts to go up, at least I didn't miss this good cheap price first, right? So everything looks good here. She's fallen after a great piece of news. That I don't think got the bump it should have got. And I think when this starts to catch on, I think this chart is going to catch fire. Come on, folks. Think about it. No holds barred. First, federally legal cannabis company in America that can work in all 50 states and outside of the country. I'm blown away. I'm excited. You should be too, especially if you like cannabis companies. Got another penny stock from the NASDAQ for you. And that should excite you. These penny stocks on the NASDAQs have benefits you just don't get at the OTC. One, they're free to trade. Get in, get out, get in, get out as often as you want. It doesn't cost you a dime. The second thing not to be overlooked, there is supreme oversight on these major exchanges. You're not going to get the shenanigans you get down on the OTC. So we're looking at fuel cell energy, ticker FCEL. She's got a brilliant breakout chart right now, and she just came out with a filing that has a catalyst. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know how big this catalyst is, but any catalyst can make a warm chart move. That's why we're looking at it. So FCEL, she finished today at $2.11 with about 3.5% gains. Now, fuel cell energy probably does what you're thinking. She is involved in the design, manufacture, operation, and service of fuel cell power plants. Taking a look at that catalyst, this filing came out either yesterday or today. The company, they've got this deal with ExxonMobil. It's a joint development agreement. This started back in 2019. They updated it in 2021. Well, the company just received a binding purchase order from Exxon for long lead fuel cell stack module equipment and tooling. 
Now, this is what the company says about this purchase order. We believe that this purchase order, which was not an obligation or requirement under the joint development agreement, represents an important step in its relationship with MTech and its affiliates. So I'm not knowing how big of a deal that is. The company thinks it's a big deal, but there's no dollar prices here. We don't know what it's worth. However, as I said, when you've got a warm chart, it doesn't take a lot to push it over the edge. It's already on the edge. We're just giving it a little push. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, let's see what we got here. A nice jump, about 50%. We went from just under 10 million to just over 15 million. Share structure for fuel cell. They don't give us a lot of information here. We see they've got 405 million shares outstanding. So we know that the float's no higher than that. You can do some Google searches. Maybe I'll come up with a few numbers if you really want to know. And her financials. Well, those are looking pretty good. From 2021 to 2022, they did almost 100% jump from 69 million to 130 million. Now we know it's millions because there's a lot more zeros we still got to throw on these numbers. Three zeros behind any number on these charts. Now this takes us up to October 2022. We get another quarter in there? We do. We get the first quarter of their next uh, period. That is $37 million. They're doing okay. They are making money. Let's take a look at their balance sheet. Let's see what they got going here. They've got $462 million in the bank. You got to put three zeros on any of these numbers too. Total assets, $939 million, almost a billion dollars in assets. And total liabilities is only $192 million. It's not too often you can put only in front of a number that big. So they're doing really good financially. Disclosures for the company. Well, we already looked at that 8K. That was the big deal. They had another 8K back here, which is a shareholder meeting that is coming up. So outside of that, we just need to look at the chart. She is looking good. Of course, we're going to start off with that six-month, four-hour view for FCEL. Our high was six months ago at $5.50, and she had a very chaotic downtrend here and fell to a low of $1.77 not too long ago, five, six days maybe. Now, she has no lack of volume. There is no problem with liquidity with this stock. You're going to always have traders here. And some days it's really strong. And right now it looks to me like the volume is starting to pick up and grow right while she's breaking out. She hit that low bubble of $1.77 five days ago, pushed herself over to 20 and over the 50 with a lot of volume here, a lot of excitement to get that. And our oscillators are looking great. We just had a crossover on a percentage price oscillator, the PPO, which is like the MACD, and that's just crossed the signal line. And look at our RSI. It has been climbing for five days from under the basement to just underneath the ceiling. So everything is really looking good on the four-hour chart. But I think the one-hour chart looks even better. Here we are at the 200 at our high of $2.92. Fell down to that low of $1.77 instantly bounced off it, crossing the 50, nice, huge, excited bounce, rolled around and then spiked. Look at this enthusiasm. I want to climb. And she got on top of the 200, fell just up underneath it and has now pushed herself back over to that 200, even away from the 20 floating on the nine day SMA. That is a light, easy climbing price right now. Our oscillators, PPO is climbing nice and steady. Our MACD is a bit weird here. Let me focus in on that just a little bit. What do we got there? She's actually underneath. We got a divergence going on here. We sure do. A divergence is when an oscillator that normally goes the same direction of the price is going the opposite direction. Maybe the price is falling and the MACD is climbing. I was watching that today on one stock. Or vice versa. The price is climbing and the MACD is falling. So what this means is you get a close up or an open up. If it's spreading, a lot, a lot of times you'll, you'll see it spike back in and vice versa. If they're coming together, you, you'll see it open up and the price will take off. So this is a bit interesting to see that that is falling and it doesn't even look like it's trying to cross over. And look here, all green bars, right? We, we have higher lows on every single one of these bars and our RSI is falling. Now that doesn't make sense to me because the RSI is the price line. 
If we change all these bars into a line, it will look like that. Exactly. It will lay right on top of it. So why this is going up and that's going down, that's a little mind boggling. <laughs> Coming down to that five day, five minute. Looking sweet. Look at how deep that bowl is. This is really getting steep here, folks. We've got a nice climb on our 200, bouncing off of that low bubble. She's gotten on top of the 200. She's bounced off of it. She's bounced off of it again. You can see where she's holding her respect. She might have even graduated up to the 50 now, getting ready to climb even faster. Our oscillators, they're not showing a whole lot going on right now. Matter of fact, every single oscillator is pushing down. They're all pushing down. Let's see what that aftermarket activity looks like. Came through the 50. That's not good. That'll show up on the oscillators easily. Came through the 50. So that's what it is. She's bouncing on the 50. She's graduating. She isn't on the 200 anymore. So that's actually a good sign. The oscillators just aren't reading it the same way. <laughs> you got to think of the market as having a conscience. You got to love it or hate it. <laughs> so FCEL folks, she is in a brilliant place to climb to that 200. And if she can hit the 200, she'll get even more gains, especially if she comes out with a piece of news, which we didn't look at because she has no news. There was not one piece of news over there at the OTC market, which is why I blanked it out. I got more to share with you though. I didn't blank that out. Might as well make it three out of three. This is another penny stock on the NASDAQ. And I'm sure you're familiar with Mullen Automotive, ticker M-U-L-N. She came on the market through a reverse merger a little while ago through Net Element. She's changed her name, changed her ticker here, but has not changed the description. Now, the company has gone through some hard times, to say the least. There was even rumors they were considering a bankruptcy, and the chart's taken a beating for that. It's all the way down at $0.08 cents right now, even though she did 8.5% gains today. Now, there's a lot of buzz online. They've had some changes. There's some current events going on, but there's also a lot of rumors and misconceptions. Now, I have listened to two interviews with the CEO. I've read some comments on forums, and I can't pull all that information together here, but I'll share it with you. I can't actually show it to you, but I'll share it with you as we go along. So Mullen, she finished today, as I said, just a little over eight cents with eight and a half percent gains. So let's focus in on those catalysts. We're missing a piece of news here. This Mullen Advanced Energy Operations is a new LLC. This was a filing that came out. They created this April 17th. Mullen Automotive did a deal with EV Technology and they created Mullen Advanced Energy Operations. Now, this is a big deal. With this deal, they are getting the license for technology and all this intellectual property for a device that you put into an electric vehicle to get its battery to give you more miles and run more efficiently. For example, you can go from 269 miles to 430 miles and get 60% more efficiency. It's already created. It's already being sold in North America and South America. But this is where things started to get uh, rumored. This is where people started to expand on this. They tell us here that along with the technology and to intellectual property, they also get all rights to all governmental and other contracts, purchase orders, or otherwise relating technology. EVT may grant limited exclusive license to the technology to a third party specifically for the United Arab Emirates. Now, there's another piece of news out there. I don't want to call it news information that they're also working with Saudi Arabia. Now, those are two different countries, uh, United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, though they're in the same area. Uh, the initial deal that they're talking about is for a $10 billion deal. And that is going to happen. It's not under discussion. It's going to happen. But the CEO says this $10 billion is just a start. He says the full deal is for $100 billion. Now, the way I understand it, it is about these devices being made. And they are building a factory in Michigan, my home state. And Mullen is going to supply all the parts and the personnel to make them at this manufacturer. And the way he broke it down, he said that Mullen gets 75% and the Arabs are going to get 
Now, I don't have any hard facts. I'm just relaying what he said. So it could be a major situation that just explodes into something we just can't see right now. Going back to that news, they also sell cars. They sell vans. They sell flatbed and cab trucks. So they got lots of vehicles that they sell and they are selling them. They just had a second order from UNC Charlotte for their EV cargo vans. And the most current piece of news, they just made a $63 million deal for a thousand vehicles ordered from Isuzu. Looking at that news, they tell us here that Mullen Automotive announces a 1,000 vehicle order for the Mullen 3 Class 3 Low Cab Forward EV truck. The order has been placed by Randy Marion Automotive. Randy Marion Isuzu is his company. With deliveries commencing in August 2023 and the purchase order is valued at $63 million. Now, they tell us down here they've made other deals just here recently. In September of last year, they acquired Bollinger Motors. They became a major-owned EV truck company. And then in December of 2022, Mullen closed on the acquisition of Electric Last Mile. You probably remember hearing about that, including all the IP and a... Uh, facility over there in Mishawaka, Indiana. So they've got a lot going on. They're still selling vehicles. They've got these deals going on over there in the Middle East with the Saudi Arabians and the United Arab Emirates. And we don't know exactly what that is, but they've now got this new device that helps electric vehicles get a lot more miles out of their charge. How hot do you think that's going to be? I think it's going to be big. So let's check out that relative volume for the company. Well, there definitely is no liquidity issues here. I'll tell you that much. She does an average of 350 million shares a day. Today, she jumped all the way up to 525 million, over a half a billion shares. In this market, egads, there is a lot of attention being paid to Mullins right now. Share structure for the company, oh, horrible. 1.7 billion shares outstanding. No clue what the flow it is, but I wouldn't presume it to be too great. You could probably find this out without using Google, but you'd have to go through the earliest filings of this company. They probably got it in there. What other financials? Nada. They've got nothing on the annual, and they got nothing on the quarterly. We're going to have to take a look at that balance sheet. Let's see what's going on here. They got $107 million in the bank. They got $440 million in assets, and they do have $516 million in liabilities. But... <laughs> You know, they, they were in hot water. We obviously already knew that, but they're getting financial backing from some of the richest nations in the world, right? So we're expecting a change here. That's what we're talking about. Looking at our disclosures, we got an 8K here on 420. Ooh, one of my favorite numbers. <laughs> what is this, a boot? Uh, company binding letter. Oh, we just looked at this one. This is the deal where they made their new LLC. So really, we got nothing to look at but that chart. So let's mosey on over there. Let's take a look at Mullen, ticker M-U-L-N, and we're going to start with the big picture. This is a five-year, one-week chart. Every one of these bars represents an entire week of trading. This goes back to May of 2018. She was $7.60 there. And then by June of 2020, she was down to two bucks. Then took a thousand percent run to $20, fell back to her 200, stayed there until November of 2021 and had this humongous fall. Now notice there is no volume here. All of a sudden the volume comes in. Now, of course, they started making revenues here. They started reporting something and then quit. And now we've got nothing going on. But she isn't as pathetic as she looks. She is actually full of hope. This is a bargain price for this company, especially with what's going on right now. And hope must be building because look at that volume. It is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So let's come on down to that six-month, four-hour view. So six months ago, we were at 94 cents. Hitting that low, how many days ago? three days ago of six cents. She's bounced off of that low underneath the nine, put herself on top of the nine, showed some enthusiasm, poking through the 50, fell back, and she is sitting on top of the nine, which is good. You can't go anywhere up if you're under your nine. 
If you want to climb, get on top of the nine. Our oscillators, looks like the PPO is trying to make a work up to the crossover, but it's not strong. We already had a crossover in a MACD. She's trying to get to the signal line, and we do have lots of green bars building up. But our RSI is pretty cool down there at 51 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Of course, she's on a downtrend. We're at 14 cents 20 days ago, bouncing off of that low bubble, up on top of the 50, bouncing off of that. Look at all of this enthusiasm, folks. She wants to climb. It's showing you where she wants to go. She did fall back, but she didn't fall back any further than a 9. Not the 20, not the 50. She's very light right now. She wants to move up. Our oscillators. PPO and MACD are each climbing, and our RSI is warmed up to 58. Looking at that five-day, five-minute. Our 200-day SMA was falling down hard and fast. Now she's rolling uphill. That's beautiful. Bouncing off of our low bubble, she's gotten on top of that 200, and she's working her way up. Our oscillators, not a lot going on here. They're a little wiggly right now, probably because of the aftermarket period. Yeah, a lot of sideways activity, but again, look, bouncing on that 50-day SMA, everything's looking good. The 20 is getting on top of the 50. All we need to do is get that 9 on top of that, and she could take off. Give this thing a little bit of clarity and news. Give us some figures. Give us some dates. Tell us more. This thing could take off, folks. And we're not just talking catalyst. The company could start to bring in revenues and really create some shareholder value. I like Mullen. I think it's good for a short hold at the right times. I also think it's going to be really good for a long hold. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited about those three stocks, especially BGXX, the first and only federally approved cannabis THC company in America. They can do everything. They can cross borders within the country. They can leave the country, import and export cannabis. Nobody can do that. They can make pharmaceutical drugs out of THC. Nobody else can do that. They can work in the country and outside of the country. This company has got it all going on, and I have no idea how big this can get. This could be an atomic bomb in the cannabis industry. Keep your eye on BGXX. F cell folks, you got to keep your eye on them too because hydrogen is where we're going for these electric vehicles. F cell uses hydrogen batteries. These are not burning hydrogen, they're converting hydrogen. And you get water, oxygen, and electricity. Imagine that driving down the road and you're putting oxygen into the air. Driving in the desert, pull over, get a cup. You can let the water in the exhaust drip into your cup and drink it. I am not exaggerating or lying, folks. It is that pure. I like F cell. The chart is set up right now. And finally, we got Mullen. Mullen has been going through some real hard times, but boy, they've got a lot of things they're working on right now. That new device that makes EV batteries go further than they've gone before. Everybody's going to want that, and it works more efficiently. And they've got some sort of deals going on with the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. Talking about $10 billion and $100 billion deals building a factory in Michigan. It all sounds good to me. Very exciting, very profitable. But as you know, I didn't do all the research. I only shared the hot stuff with you. I'm saving the rest of the DD for you. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.